Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World 2.5. I'm Spudknocker, and today we are back in the AV8B Harrier 2 to talk about startup procedures. With the release of Chuck's Guide for the AV8B Harrier 2, I looked at the startup section and saw, holy crap, there's 40 plus uh, little steps you have to take to get the Harrier ready to go. And I thought, wow, uh, that must be daunting for a new Harrier pilot or even an older Harrier pilot looking to uh, kind of get reacquainted with the startup procedure uh, for a little brush up. Uh, I know that if I haven't started up a jet for a while, it takes me a little bit to figure out exactly what I need to do again. So that's why I'm making this video. You can go ahead and uh, get started here now that those trucks are out of the way. So first thing you want to do, turn your battery on, turn your generator on, turn your APU generator on, and to turn the APU on, we just flip these three fuel switches here, these fuel pumps. There we go. Fuel cutoff switch down. Now we've got the APU going. I like to... Warning, warning. That's normal, don't worry about that. I like to flip off the parking brake lever because here in DCS World 2.5, there seems to be a weird break weird bug where you, if you turn on the parking brake on an airplane while you're starting it up or you're on the taxiway, the airplane seems to bump up and down. It's very strange and I'm not sure what causes that, but that's why I tend to leave it off. So we're ready to go ahead and start this bad boy up. Make Caution. sure you get that button because that tends to cause some malfunctions in the startup procedure for a lot of people. Um, if it's forgotten. So we're ready to go ahead and start this engine up. There we go. Now it's going to get loud, so I'm going to close the canopy. And we can gently push the throttle forward. You can see the RPM climbing. Now we're ready to go ahead and start turning on our MFDs and the electronics inside the jet. So we can go ahead and just turn these brightness knobs gently. And everything turns on. Okay. Everything looks good. Because DCS World's deferred shading makes everything a bit dark, which is nice, I like the lots of contrast in my games, but I tend to turn on the instrument lighting just to make sure I can see everything. Now that once you have the engine started up, you want to make sure that your uh, axis that you have bound to the uh, nozzle degrees is set to uh, the starting position of zero. Sometimes if you've just flown the Harrier, like you just landed, or you've been playing around with that axis, you start off with it in the down position, and that can make a little bit of a weird situation when you're trying to taxi. You're like, huh, I can't go anywhere without pushing the throttle way up. So make sure that's zeroed out. You can turn the flaps on. That's always important. The anti-skid switch needs to be on since we're not on a carrier. And Another issue I see a lot is why isn't the HUD uh, coming up? So you just got to pull the stick to the side here, throw this guy over to NAV. There's no lineup implemented yet for the INS system, so all you got to do is just throw that over into NAV. And as you can see, for our nose wheel steering, we have cast right here. It means our anti-skid is on. If you're on a carrier, you're going to want the anti-skid to be off so that you can use high gain nose wheel steering. Here on the airfield, we definitely want the no skid on so we don't accidentally skid off the runway into the grass out here. That would be definitely a bummer. I also want to move the nozzle position down between 30 and 40. I like to have it at 40 for taxiing. Uh, it actually makes the taxiing a little bit easier in the Harrier, as well as you won't risk, run the risk of damaging your flaps that you would with the nozzles all the way at zero. All right. So now it's time to turn on our dampeners. So these, these guys right here for pitch, yaw, and roll. 
I also want to turn Q feel on. Those just make the movements of the aircraft and the stick a lot nicer, a lot smoother, uh, so there's not so much jerking around. All right, let's see. Turn on our lids and oxygen. Everything looks good. Do a sweep around the cockpit. Another thing to do to make sure everything is ready to go in your Harrier is to head back to the menu here, go to the stores page, and make sure your stores are what it was assigned to you for the campaign mission or what you selected in the mission editor or the mission planner. Uh, just make sure everything is good there. Uh, I got two IR TV maps, my mistake, and some LAU 68 rocket pods, so those are good to go. And with that, we are ready to go ahead and taxi. So it's not nearly as daunting as the Chuck's guide makes it sound. You just gotta kind of come up with a methodology of my ideas, APU, run up the console here, uh, turn everything on, get the engine started, and then check out everything, make sure your navigation systems are ready to go and all that. So if I kind of tend to do a sweep from the back left all the way across the right like a real pilot would do in the Harrier. So, with that, we're ready to taxi. So let's go ahead and push the power up, and let's go. My grandfather, who was a pilot in Vietnam, he flew A1 Sky Raiders actually, which I'd love to see in DCS World eventually. Uh, he always told me that how you handle the aircraft on the ground, keeping it at the center of the taxiway, center of the runway, etc., is just as important, if not more important, to show off your professionalism than how you handle the aircraft in the air. Both are extremely important, but how you handle the aircraft on the ground really displays your professionalism as a pilot. I find that sometimes a Harrier likes to pull left or right while you're taxiing. Not totally sure why that is. I think it's more to do with my crappy rudder pedals than anything else. But uh, that's just something to keep uh, in mind. So we'll stop short here. Another thing that I see that people get mixed up on when they're starting up is there's two levers behind the throttle here that are pretty much hidden. And one is a throttle cutoff and one is a parking brake lever. If you hit the throttle cutoff lever, when you push your throttle forward uh, to start the engine up and increase the RPM, the engine's just going to die on you. And it's really easy to accidentally hit the wrong one, so it's just something to keep in mind. I see that problem a lot on the forums, on Hoggett, and on the DCS World Facebook page. So, like my grandpa always said, make sure we get this guy down the center line here. Show off our professionalism as an AV-AP pilot. Perfect and we are ready to go. So, that's just a little intro on starting up the AV-8B for new pilots and pilots who want a little bit of a brush up. And uh, it looks like a nice day for a flight here at my favorite airbase, Sanaki Kolki. All right guys, fly safe and have a good day.